Good day, everyone. We come together on the second Sunday of Easter to continue to celebrate with Easter joy the resurrection of Jesus. We gather at home and we gather here in the church, but we're praying together. And that's what's important at this time in which we're asked to stay home so that we can keep one another safe and that we can truly beat this pandemic and the coronavirus. As we do come together today, we remember in our prayers all those who were buried this week as we had middle services. So we keep the families of John Shimataro, Rosalie Liakano, Helen Joseph, Gerald Higgins, and Jenny Sciolino in our prayers. And we also pray for those intentions which our Mass is offered for today, for Kevin Texera, Philip Dimitri, Helen Tabor, Lottie Akins, Ralph Martin Sr., Michael and Connie Bolger, Teresa Williams. And so let us join in singing our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. are written 
that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
describe some of the disciples, even after they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, even after they had experienced him alive, some still doubted. They believed that Jesus had risen, but they still doubted, how can this be? But Thomas was different. I will not believe. And then that moment comes when Jesus once again appears to his disciples, again bringing peace, his first words always, peace be with you. And immediately he turns to Thomas. Immediately he looks into Thomas's eyes. Immediately he says to him, Look, Thomas, go ahead. Use your fingers, use your hands, probe my wounds. Stop not believing, but believe. In that one powerful encounter, as all encounters with Jesus are, but in this particular encounter, Thomas can only express, my Lord and my God. And Jesus reminds us, you have come to believe, Thomas, because you have seen, but blessed are those who who have not seen and believed. So in our own experience of the risen Christ, yes, we believe in Jesus risen from the dead. We hold on to that faith in the resurrection. We hold on to that faith in a God who is so good and merciful, and yet, how many of us have doubted Don't get me wrong, doubting is good because it helps us to reaffirm our belief, reaffirm our faith. Because remember, doubting implies that we believe in something, but maybe we have become unsure because of circumstances or things going on in our lives. Hasn't it happened to you? Someone that you love, at home, or in hospice care, maybe suffering from a terminal illness, maybe someone we love suffering from the COVID-19 virus. And doesn't it sometimes happen in our hearts and our minds? How, God, how can you let this happen? Isn't that a little bit of doubt? of what we believe. We believe God is good. We believe God is comforting. We believe God will save His people. And yet, our human experience sometimes is different. There's a little bit of doubt there. How, God, how can good things happen to that people? Lord, why are you allowing my loved one to suffer? Why are they hurting? Why, oh Lord, is this happening to our world, this coronavirus, Lord? Why? Aren't you powerful, God? Can't you raise your right arm and have this be ended? Aren't those questions of doubt that appear in our hearts and our minds? But that's good. Why? Because it forces us to reflect, to ponder, to sit. And don't we have a lot of time now? to sit and to reflect and to ponder about all that we believe and hope in God. So Thomas was not doubting. No. He was not believing in the resurrection of Jesus. That belief had died on the cross, but by this miracle, this encounter, Thomas's belief is reawakened. In our lives, as we continue to stay at home, as we continue to pray together,
together, ever together from our homes. Let us entrust any of those doubts. Let us place any of those fears. Let us place them in the hands, the wounded hands of our loving Savior. And let him whisper into our ears, don't be unbelieving, but believe. And so together now, let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us be confident in making our prayers to our Heavenly Father as we now pray. We pray that the peace of the risen Christ will be our first priority. Peace in our families, in our communities, in our world, and peace with our God and His creation. We pray to the Lord. We pray on this Divine Mercy Sunday that we renew our commitment to compassion, love, mercy and forgiveness in all of our dealings with our family, neighbors, and particularly those who may have injured or offended us in the past. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those throughout the world who continue to suffer from the coronavirus, and particularly for those in intensive care and in nursing homes. We pray to the Lord. We pray for health workers throughout the world and who at great personal risk and sacrifice are attending to the needs of victims of this devastating global pandemic. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones this past week and who have been unable to be comforted by friends and the community, especially the families of John Shimataro, Rosalie Liakono, Helen Joseph, Gerald Higgins, and Jenny Shilino. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the faithful departed, our family members, friends, benefactors, and especially this weekend, Kevin Texera, Philip Dimitri, Helen Tabor, Lottie Aikens, Ralph Martin Sr., Michael and Connie Bolger, Teresa
Lisa Wilkins. May they come to enjoy new life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And in a special way, we also lift up to the Lord all those prayers and intentions that have been entrusted to us and have been placed in the basket that is here in front of our altar. And we pray and join with these intentions as we ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us as we sing. Hail, hail.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus
this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. First and foremost, I want to wish all of you a continued blessings during this Easter season. As a church around the world, we will be celebrating Easter for the next 40 days until Ascension Thursday, and then we'll conclude the Easter season with the celebration of Pentecost. So, Happy Easter to all of you. Words of gratitude cannot come easily to all those who continue to support our incredible parishes with your prayers. I know all of you are praying at home for all of us, and many of you will continue to be so generous during this difficult time, either online or sending in your donations. I am just truly overwhelmed and thankful for your continued gifts and support of our parish. Know that on our website, we continue to have many resources every day uploaded with different resources for praying at home. And this weekend in particular, there is a link to our Divine Mercy Holy Hour, which is a, an opportunity to gather and to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, but also experience Eucharistic Adoration and Daytime Prayer. So go to our website, ccgronline.com, and you'll find there a web link to the Divine Mercy Chaplet and the Divine Mercy Holy Hour. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in 